here on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, you know, my day we all gone. But I wanna tell y'all, make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But Patreon is where you need to go, because that's where you're gonna see our full length interview. Just go ahead and sign up for our membership. And you'll be able to see unlimited amount of full-length interviews. And the same goes for YouTube. We do have a membership package on our YouTube channel as well. Man, thank you so much for that, Miss Jamaica. Okay. I appreciate you for letting our people know, man. You're you know? welcome. And uh, we got a special guest in here today. She don't need no introduction, man. If you've if you've been by a few schools, you know what I'm saying. And, you always say these people you know, don't need no they introduction, don't, they don't, but they, they do. Don't. No, no, they don't. They do. First of all, this is my part of the segment, <laughs> and I don't need you telling me if they need an introduction or not. You know what I'm saying? Let's just stop that right now. Did I stop your little speech about uh, uh, the membership and uh, what else you say when you say your little YouTube? So you're not speech? listening. Yes, yeah, look. Shout out to all the people that heard what she said. <laughs> hey, man, listen, man. Brianna Williams? Yes. Man, she, uh, Brianna Sade. Yeah. I was just about to say that, too. You cannot leave the Sade out, okay? Yeah, check it, man. Brianna Sade Williams in the building, man. This lady here, she is a counselor. Mm -hmm. And she, uh, I think she in one of those, what are those fraternity things? Sorority. She wearing the look. What, what, is, what is that you in? Oh. What? See, now, we're not going to do that on here. I told you that was a gang. Don't you get on here with all that gang stuff, okay? Don't do them sounds. I heard the sound. I'd have heard that before. You know? <laughs> Check Never it, man. Prevent. So, man, I mean, you know, we just, you know, we sometimes have some interesting people on here, right? She's an educator, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. She, she works and, and she does a lot of different things for the community, I'm pretty sure. But we're mm -hmm. about to get into it. Let's do it like we do. Okay. So, <laughs> we know you're a counselor, but I know growing up, you probably, that's not what you wanted to do. Growing up, are you always wanted to be a counselor? In a way, In I a didn't. Way. Um, As a kid, I'm talking like t mm, say from eight, nine, ten. You know, people ask you what you want to be when you grow up. Well, okay, so I had many dreams. My initial dream was to be a singer. Okay. I wanted to be Beyonce before she was Beyonce. Okay, but now that there is a Beyonce, my nickname Realty is Beyonce. Oh, okay, yeah. So the, I'm her. So you can sing. Week. Yes, but only for Jesus. But I can okay. dance, so I'm not afraid to dance and all that kind of stuff. So initially, I wanted to be in entertainment, but I've I've always had a love for children, I, and I've always known that my purpose is to work with children. Mm -hmm. And so in high school, I knew I wanted to be a counselor. I didn't understand really the counseling world, and so now for me to be able to walk in a childhood dream and have visions and dreams of where you know, God can take me. I'm, I'm really excited to. But be before in the you get into, field. because then you know, because for me, when I think about people who go into counseling, um, and this might be only just me, um, I'm thinking, okay, something happened traumatic. Why they want to come and heal the world? Mm -hmm. They want to help all the kids. But they don't want them to go through what they've been through. So I would like to know what you've been through. Um, were you raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Were you? So, no, I was raised in a single-parent household. With just your mom? With my mother and my sister, yes. And your sister, where was your dad? Um, Respectfully, I knew who my father was, and I saw him periodically, mm -hmm. but with all due respect, he was more so of like a child support dad. Okay, yeah. so he didn't, you know, give you, come pick you up on the holidays. Because, you know, with child support, because when we get grown, we, we understand certain things when you get grown. When you're a kid, you don't understand certain things. Um, but, you know, with child support, you know that they can get you every holiday, every summer, every, you know, whatever. So he didn't come get you. No, I remember um, a 10th birthday, everybody and their grandma called me. Mm -hmm. And the only person that I wanted to call me was my dad. Was your dad? And I sat at the bar stool, or at the bar all day mm -hmm. in the bar stool, feet swinging, blue waiting. swimsuit on, waiting, and everyone called me except for him. So I would not say that my father didn't love me. As I got older, I realized he was dealing with his own traumas. Um, and unknowingly, he was to me what his father was to him. Exactly. Um, not did you ever sit down with him? Because not everybody have the guts or the opportunity to sit down and say to their parent depends on if even if they're the type of person that will listen say you know what I don't want you to say anything at a moment but let me vent all of this that I have on my chest respectfully before you know you decide to go so to say um 
and be like, why, you know, X, Y, Z, this is how I feel. Because a lot of times we don't know what the other person is feeling because we don't express our feelings very well. So we can only assume how our other person feel. Or sometimes people get caught up in reality. They don't, don't even think about it. So by us expressing, okay, because I did that when I got older with my mom and said, you know, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or this is what I was needing as a child, but you didn't do that. And then she was like, well, I needed something else as a child, so I overcompensated on that for you, but that's not what I needed. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just, they don't know because we don't communicate. Mm -hmm. So have you ever done that with him as when you got older? Unfortunately, I did not have the opportunity because he passed away when I was 15. When you were 15. Um, to terminal cancer. Mm. So when he got sick and he was reaching out very frequently, like every day, I was more so Mad. annoyed. And I didn't understand that he was reaching out because he knew he was sick. Mm. Yeah. You didn't know. He no, didn't, I didn't tell know. you. No. So did how not. did that feel once you... So did he pass away before you were able to talk to him? Yeah. Uh, with... What's crazy is he was going in for surgery. Um, we knew the cancer came back. Um, at that time, we didn't know the cancer had spread all over his body. Mm -hmm. So he was technical surgeon at a very um, infamous hospital in DFW, and he fell going to the bus one day. Um, when they opened him up for surgery, they realized the cancer had spread all over his body, which mm -hmm. caused his hip to break. So he was going in for hip surgery. Um, during the surgery, he had seven to eight strokes, which caused a brain clot in his brain. Mm. So he automatically went into a coma. So there was no conversation. We didn't even know he was going into surgery until he was in the coma. Because mm -hmm. we were, me and my sister, we were the youngest. So they wanted, my brothers wanted to protect us. And so when he didn't come out the coma, sorry, yeah, when he didn't come out the coma, they called us. And he was in the coma for about three months. And he ended up passing. So there was no dialogue, no, hey, baby, I love you. No, I'm sorry. No, I forgive you. How did you? None feel mm. I know I can imagine all the mixed feelings you had um of course we were upset that he kept it from us um now understanding as an adult that he probably wanted to protect us mm -hmm. but we were hurt confused angry with God I mean just a, a mix of emotions. were you angry at him yeah absolutely mm -hmm. because up until four years ago having a conversation with my brother who lives in Houston I really thought that my daddy didn't love me Mm -hmm. um, but having that conversation with my brother and realizing again that my father was come overcoming his own traumas, um, he he did love me. He just didn't know how to how display to... it because he didn't get that love from his father. Okay, and um, did you ever learn how to forgive? It? Was that the the moment when you learned how to forgive yourself, or did you ever forgive yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Forgave myself and my father. Yeah. And, and a lot of other people. Uh -huh. um, the goal is to be able to forgive like Joseph or Jesus. Mm. I'm not there yet because like Jesus forgives and forget. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the goal and we're still working on that. But forgiveness is a beautiful thing. It does truly make you feel free. It well, does and it releases a lot. And I always tell people and one thing he always look at me. I always say everything happens for a reason. Here we go. And um, the reason why I say that is it might not even be for you. It might be for somebody else who is watching your journey and is going through something right now with their father, not answering the phone like and not knowing what's going on that they need to answer the phone. Um, it's just any little speck of your journey that could help millions of people just listening to it or just hearing it. It, it, it can it can help a lot that's all I'm gonna say but I really do believe sometimes it could be for your healing it could be for your father who already passed along you know we don't know or you don't know because if he actually before he passed away you know did it between him and God mm -hmm. you know what I mean because that's my main purpose is like what do you believe in God because at the end of the day when God decided to take you or any of us it's your relationship between you and him, mm -hmm. not nobody else's. Right. Wow, you know, um, being a counselor and dealing with the things that you've had to deal with, it's got to be tough, you know. Um, just, you know, you you listen to people. But it's also, it's it's tough, but you, you're built for it. You understand what I'm saying? Because you've been through so much. You're able to help people. And I think that's live, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've had a few counselors on here. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, the thing I wonder, you know, is like, you know, where their faith lies. A lot of times, you know, um, 
Sometimes I ask them. Sometimes it comes out. Some of them shy back. Some of them say, you know, you know, you know how it go. Um, how tough is it paralleling between, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. um, understanding your faith and being able to talk to people about their situation? Mm-hmm. It's very tough, and it's often something that I sh- still struggle with t- mm-hmm. today um, because I know what my I know what religion says to a certain aspect. I know what my relationship with God says, but then I also know what science says. And that's where that counseling piece comes in because counseling believes in theories and the scientific things and what does data show and things of that nature. But for me, um, I battle between spirit and counseling, but I'll be honest, my spirit always wins because at the end of the day, I can't help what I believe. And no matter what I've gone through, no matter what I've experienced, no matter what things look like, I know God to be true. Even on my worst days, even in death, God still gets the glory. And so um, for me, I'm always putting my faith and my spirituality over what my theory says. So no, I will be honest. I'm not a spiritual counselor. Um, I'm more so of a life gives you more experience ever than a book will or what science shows, if, if that makes sense. But when did you um, get to this point in your life? Because I know that you weren't always at that point. Um, like I, well, um, losing my father at the age of 15 helped me develop my own relationship with God. Right. And so, like I said, although that dream of counseling was always there, when I initially sought out to be a counselor after high school, I struggled between science and Christianity at the time. And I chose to do away with um, seeking counseling because my spirit was leading me to do so. Um, But I don't, I don't know, like as life progressed, even now after losing my mom in 2020 um, and I still struggle with it, I'm still grieving. I realized that God has caused me to go through the journey of grief in order to help children every single day that I see who are dealing with grief. It's like it's one thing to deal with it at the age of 29, but when you have a kid who who doesn't understand God, who doesn't understand life why? within itself, mm-hmm. why, what's going on, come to you and, and have these mix of emotions, and you can be like, wow, like this is why God put me here Man, for you. That's dope. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like it. I think it's, it's needed. God let you go through the things that you went through. Like I always say, uh, and it talks about it in uh, uh, John chapter 9. I go back to that bl- the blind man who basically, you know, uh, people say, who did see? And they asked Jesus, the disciples did, this man or his parents, that he would be made blind. And he said, neither did his father see nor his parents, but, but that the works of the father may be made manifest through him. Sometimes you go through things in order to show people the miracle in God in you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happens a lot of times. So as you go through your experiences in life, you don't know why they're happening, but it was a reason for you going through what you went through, so much so that you're able to talk and communicate and connect with those children. And I think that's live, mm-hmm. real live. Mm-hmm. Can I say something? Go ahead. When it came to my father, um, because the relationship was different, um, when God took me through that journey, I understood, okay, you're taking me through this because this is going to help somebody down the line. And literally two weeks after my father fa- passed, my childhood best friend father passed. Wow. And then we had a man from the church who was amazing, Baron Stansel. He passed, and it really hurt me. So as I've you know, maneuvered through life, I've encountered people who lost their fathers, and I was able to help with my mother. I was like, why do I have to be the example for other again, people right. the mar- like, yeah. again, again. Like, like god this is unfair yeah. and this hurts because you can handle it <laughs> <laughs> because you can handle it so maybe so but i promise as a school counselor when i counter kids again who's dealt with grief and i have to look them the, through their eyes and i have to ask them have you felt all these five emotions which are like the five stages of grief and they're like what yeah. are the five stages of grief? five stages of grief are um, sadness, which also may be defined as depression, which in the grief process, it's okay and it's expected. If you're going through depression outside of grief, it's a real concern. So you have depression, you have acceptance, you have denial, you have guilt, you have anger, and I believe that's all five. In no particular order, are everybody's different. Everybody's different. For me personally, I have felt all five of those emotions in one day. Mm-hmm. And so that's the conversation that I have with my kiddos and I let them know, like, if you felt these type of emotions, 
that's okay. You're going through the grieving process. So what do we do? How do we channel those emotions in a positive way um, to where it's not eating you alive on the inside? But grief is a... um, it's a tough battle. I don't even think the the and there's top no time limit. There's or, no time limit no, on grief. It can no. go for a very long time or no. for a very short time. Yeah. But helping all these different people does that help you with your grief? Does that help you heal by helping others? I don't know if, if it necessarily helps me heal, but it helps me see that God took me through this for a reason. Mm-hmm. It takes me back to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was wondering, does it make you relive all of those feelings over and over and over? Like, you know, like somebody going through a certain trauma and it means somebody who's talking about almost the same thing that they went through when sometimes some people try to forget about it. You know what I mean? So they can put it behind them so they can move on mm-hmm. to a regular life. Does it keep make you relive it every day? When you have your counselor hat on, you're you're dealing with that person and, and their in- issues. So although I may emphasize, I don't have time to think about my own process because I'm trying to take you to the next step in the healing process. Okay. Um, so, again, not necessarily heal. It may make you, again, realize I went through this for a reason or, okay. yeah, this emotion may be triggered. If somebody came to me talking about their mom and cancer, that's super sensitive to me. But if your mom unfortunately passed away in a car accident or something of that nature, I can I can work with you. I can empathize with you on a level to where I understand that that pain of losing a mom is unfathomable. You said it could be very sensitive. So if somebody did come to you about losing your mom or cancer, has there ever been a time where someone did come to you like that and you're like, let me pass you on to somebody else mm-hmm, absolutely. because I'm, I'm not at a state to, to help you right now with that. Mm-hmm. When I lost my mom, I lost my mom July 2020. My, my mentor lost her mother in December. My principal at the time lost her mother in December. Another coworker lost her mother in December. So not all were cancer. One, one's parent went on hospice. That's how my mom went. Another one was just illness. Another one was COVID. So although the situations were different, it was still super sensitive. And I remember thinking like, God, what do I say to these people? And he taught me in that moment, sometimes you don't need to say anything. Your presence sometimes is Mm -hmm. more than enough. Mm -hmm. So I was just there and I would just like crack a joke or check in with them. And they would really appreciate someone just understanding, but just being there via their presence. I'm I'm glad you said that because there's so many of us. um, Almost everyone have a friend who um, lost a loved one Mm -hmm. or going through depression for some reason or form. It might not even be death. It could be just anything. And when you love somebody, you want to help them. You want them to shake back real quick and you don't know what to say. Um, When as you get older, you lose you have a lot of friends who've lost people. So I'll be looking at my Facebook and you hear rest in peace, this person, rest in peace, that person. I'm like, oh, my God, like, what do you say? Yes, you say condolences to you and your family. But when it's somebody who is actually close to you, you know, you want to pick up the phone and call. But then, like, what do you actually say? But I do believe that just letting somebody know that I'm here for you. But then I feel mad when they don't use that olive branch and like call me and say, I just just listen. Don't say anything, just listen, or just make me feel like I'm useful, mm-hmm. you know, although I put out an olive branch. Mm-hmm. Well, I definitely, uh, I commend you. I, I think the counseling is needed in certain situations. Not for me, but for certain people, you know. Um, people who, you know, that God tell you to talk to. It's just like having a spiritual conversation. It's the same thing, really. You guys put a name and stuff on it. You fancy it up, but it's really the same thing. I truly believe what King Solomon said when he said there's nothing new under the sun in the book of Ecclesiastes. I really understand why he said it, because you chokers are not going to trick me into thinking it. You came up with something new, because it's nothing new up under the sun. <laughs> Do you believe in, because... Um, I, okay, we're older. How old are you? Like 20 something? 21. No, really? Hey, hey, I was going to say like 24, oh, 23, something like celebrate. that. <laughs> but no, the reason why I'm asking this question because, you know, when we were younger, it wasn't nothing about mental illness, it wasn't everywhere. Never did talk um, about it. It was, you need a whooping. You, you need, need to chill. Bu- Don't you, you think they should this. bring that back? I would so love to strike I'm, one. So down. I'm saying to you now, since you're in this field, um, because everybody's using this 
label as mental illness we all have mental illness and i can understand some form or fashion but yet some of it you just need to quit trying to use this my argument is mental health really is real right um my mother was born in 57 so Mm -hmm. baby boomer she grew up in a generation where going to seek counseling was taboo Mm -hmm. she uh, up like the last year of her life because we had so many issues between her and i i asked her i said mom would you go to counseling with me she said yeah i was shocked because four months prior when i was going through mental illness for real for real she told me i don't know if i'm allowed to say but she was like f your mental health Okay. And I'm like, what? She didn't think it was real. She's basically like, she do thought what you need to do up. and get over it. Right. And so I feel like your generation, my generation, we were taught resilience. Mm-hmm. This generation where mental health is real mm-hmm. and it seems or it comes off as is everybody's making an excuse for how people are feeling or, or we pacify it. My concern is that we're not teaching these young people resilience. Back when I was growing up or you were it, growing up, it was balance. like, deal with it. needs it. to be a balance. Figure it out. Right. Right. These nowadays it's like everybody is just so ready to give up at Mm. every little thing and then what i tell people is like hey life is going to continue to get tougher and tougher (coughs) you're built to last like put one foot in front of the other and keep keep moving right figure out how to work through your concerns or your your issues and go from there the beauty is you can go sit in front of somebody and have a conversation you people know about essential oils you can use essential oils to help you with your anxiety and your depression back then when it was taboo to our our family members they were dealing with it on their own or they turned to drugs or alcohol right now we have the tools that we need to succeed so use those tools and and push through and be a better individual right and i i think what mental health to me it brought awareness to say okay sit down think about your childhood your past because everything that you go through right now a lot of it stems from back then Mm -hmm. and not only think about because children only think about themselves period Think about, okay, just like you said, it's my father. The reason why he was like is because of his father. Mm -hmm. Think about, okay, the reason why whoever's treating me a certain way, maybe that's stemming from not just them, but something else. Let's think more mental about everything when we're speaking to somebody rather than just this physical person right in front of me pissing me off, blah, 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 whatever. Let's start to use our brain and start to think about why is this happening? Not, oh, God, it's me, 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 me. So I'm liking where it mental health, it makes you think more, you know, beyond the surface. Mm-hmm. But let's deal with it. Let's, as I said, have a balance, toughen it up with certain things, figure it out and toughen up and move on. Mm-hmm. Not soak into this oh i need medicine because not everything you need depression pills for but everybody's like oh give me some pills let me pacify this i'll take i want to be numb to this because you're not dealing with it Mm -hmm. if i could say two things number one um i feel like mental health now does force you to kind of go back and look at oh what this anxiety this is depression this sexual immortality or sexual cravings or addiction is not something that i'm dealing with for the first time people before me dealt with mm-hmm. now we're coming into a generation who wants to break generational curses mm-hmm. who realizes this didn't start with me but it is going to end with me i love that so that's the beauty of where we are right now when it comes to mental health as far as medication this is probably very taboo I'm anti-medicine. I believe in the holistic approach, which where is where my spirituality comes in because I believe God can heal some things that man says can never be healed. Right. And so I believe in doing the work and, and taking the holistic approach. What can you do? Seek God, fast, pray, do whatever you need to do to get healed, to, to break those generational curses opposed to medicating. Medicine for me will always be the last result. And result. some people, which yeah. I totally agree with you, a hundred percent. But I've heard, you know, some counselors and some people say, well, it's past that. It's it's something it's a medical Im- imbalance in your brain that you're going to need medicine for that. You're going to need this for. And I'm like, but God can heal you. Or um, if you sit down and really put your mind to it and really for me personally, this is only me. When just like an alcoholic, they have to first say I'm an alcoholic to start, you know, seeking help. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you start realizing that's the devil, 
that's attacking you, whether through somebody else or through your own mind, you realize that every time something comes at you, a thought, because everybody have negative thoughts. Not one person is exempted. Once that thought come in your mind, I'll be like, devil, I'm, I don't have time for you today because I recognize what it is. Even it can come from God because God can be testing you. So don't get me wrong thinking that everything bad comes from the devil. Bad things do come from God, but it's a test. I'm like, God, I know you're trying to test me today or the devil don't bother with me. I'm going to overcome this. It all starts in your mind. You have to condition your mind to say, I'm not going to deal with you. My husband and I have been together 20 years. Everybody know that relationships have their ups and downs. You know, whether I piss him off or he pisses me off, um, I have to say, okay, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to scream at you right now because it's only going to make you scream back at me. I'm not, I'm going to sit down and be quiet. Find different approaches. Sometimes I have to be quiet and like send a text. You have to know different routes to take so that you don't end up going crazy in the hospital, having a mental breakdown. Because what it's going to do, deteriorate your body at the end of the day. Any of this stuff deteriorates your body because stress, that's what stress does. It gets you ill, causes all different sort of things to happen to you. Mm -hmm. So why are you going to do that to yourself? And that's how I think. Mm -hmm. That's me personally. And I hope somebody can take something from that. Mm -hmm. Wow, let's let's talk about the educational process, like how you ended up uh, even being, you know, whatever you is, whatever <laughs> the heck that is you call yourself, that gang you're in. Uh, let's see how you got to that gang. Uh, it's not a gang. Well, Put just, some respect uh, on that I'm name. just saying, just we let are, me know how you got to the gang world counselor. Renowned. That's all I'm saying. We I were the only we're so we're now. We're now. We're we're now. We're we're now. We're 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 now. We've been working since 1913. Let me just say this. You know, the road that leads to destruction is broad. <laughs> but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. You, you know, I'm not saying nothing about the broad roads, but I'm just saying what I'm saying about the word of God. Now, all I'm asking you to do is We're give me your, in, just give me your, uh, like how many years path, it uh, of how you e were educated. Like how many years it took her <laughs> to get to where she is, it, is right now? Yeah. Like, like I want to hear your process of getting into that game. Okay, so <laughs> I um, have always been um, great academically or excelled academically. I graduated from the Lancaster High School um, in Lancaster, Texas, class of 2010, uh, with honors, top 15% of my uh, class. Yeah. Um, and so I did um, had 3.8 GPA coming out of high school and was automatically admitted to in, into any college that I wanted to. I didn't Free know of cost? In Texas, yes. Okay. Didn't know much about college. The first in my family to actually go to college. Didn't know nothing about FAFSA, so that was an interesting journey. Um, I stayed because I could not afford to go to school. I wanted to go to UT Arlington. Um, so I stayed, worked a year and a half, went to Cedar Valley, saved up some money, and I really wanted to get away from home because my relationship with, with my mom was not the best. So I ended up going to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff hey. um, in 2012. <laughs> And I graduated in 2016 with a Bachelor's of Liberal Arts, English Liberal Arts. So I do have an English degree. But that's not anything I have to do with counseling. Oh, my mental, por favor. Okay. okay. A little fluent. So, um, so I did a makeup company. I work, I was a communication liaison. You did a makeup company? For, a, for a makeup company, Anastasia oh. Beverly Hills. Oh, okay. Um, when I first got out of school, it was nice, but God was really beating me up that, that first year because I, I wasn't doing what he wanted me to mm -hmm. do, which was to work with kids. So I went through an all-star program, got my teacher certificate, was a teacher for five years, and I knew that... Teaching what, what grade? English. Grade so, point. No, grade. Okay, so I taught first grade my first year, which was amazing. They're like sixth yeah, graders they're young, now. they're cute. They, they don't yeah. get that much trouble. That's easy. Amazing experience, but I'm a little firm and stern, so I like older kids. Mm. End up transitioning to middle school. I've taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade English, and now I have transitioned to school counseling. Currently, um, so did you have to go back? Okay, go keep going. Sorry, currently, am a student at the University of North Texas at Dallas, where I'm obtaining a master's in school counseling and clinical mental health. So I finish up this summer and I walk in December, and I'm just really grateful. So you can um, be a counselor before you finish getting your degrees for counseling. 
Yeah, with the favor of God and the way that, you know, some things work out. But, yes, this is my first year of school counseling because technically I finished with my school counseling side in the summer. Okay. And so I only had, like, a, a year left to do all my internships and practicums. And so, like, yeah, I finished in the summer. I graduated in December, and I'm ready to begin my journey in expressive arts therapy. Um, eventually, I would like to have my own performance art arts academy where people come and get healing through music whether it's getting in the studio mm. dropping a song busting some beats through art through drama through see dance. people don't realize that's what a lot of rappers do yeah. they l unload all their stress and frustration right into their music mm -hmm. and they say they feel awesome at, when they're done mm -hmm. but um so right now you're only helping the children that you at the school yes. or do you take on people otherwise no so right now is i'm just school counseling however i do look forward to the clinical mental health side where i'll be at lpc and my goal is to heal multi-generation so i'm doing the children i'll have the parents and then the elderly so i can heal up to three generations at one time see and i really feel that that's what's lacking because you're at the school helping the children but the children have to go back home and deal with the parents and you know, he always tell me I watch too much TV, honestly, but I always feel like ideas come from reality for these TV shows. So um, when these kids go back home and feel like, OK, I'm doing better, I'm healed and whatever. Some of these parents, especially if they're lacking in education or you think you're better than me, you ain't going to get nothing. You know, you have some parents out there who probably like that and t and really mentally abusing their children. You know what I mean? So if they can receive some healing, and when I mean healing, I really feel healing starts with forgiveness. Mm. Whereas some of those people are holding on to things, are holding on to things of people who passed away. Because the parents and then the grandparents, how, to, how they were treated and whatever. Like, well, I had to go through this. Why, what makes you any different? You're going to have to go through the same thing that I'm going through. There's some people who deal with it like that. Some people reverse it and saying, no, I'm not gonna have you going through what I'm going through. I'm gonna end that right now. And they seek help. But some people who turn to drugs, alcohol, all of that, they're like, what make you any better than me? Mm -hmm. Because they're swallowing in all of their, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the one thing about you that I realize that you're very good at, that you're a great listener. Because I, I noticed that. Because I'm talking to you, you, have, you don't interrupt. You listen to every single thing, and which, I know someone else who is going to school for counseling as well. And she said, that's what they teach you in counseling. Mm -hmm. They teach you that you're supposed to listen to everything. Do not give your own opinions. You're supposed to, there's certain ways you're supposed to word what you're saying. You cannot give your, is that true? Yes. The biggest thing in counseling is the client does more of the talking. Mm -hmm. You do more so of the listening. listening and facilitating here and there. What I will realize, what I will want people to realize what counseling is, initially, me seeking counseling. Um, prior to me starting grad school, I thought the counselor healed me. No, you do the work. And I, that's what I want people to really understand. It takes great courage to go and sit in front of someone and detail everything to a stranger, right? But with you detailing everything to that stranger, it's a safe place and it's confidential unless you disclose harm to self, harm to someone right. else. Then Someone's they have to report you. it. Yeah, right. But it, it's a safe place where you can, even things that you may be ashamed to tell God out loud, even though he knows, right? you can say that to that person and they can give you tools and strategies to elevate your life or maneuver through your healing journey. But the counselor does not heal you. And you don't give you, advice. No, we do not give That's advice. That's what she was yes. telling me. You do not give advice because yeah. if something ever goes wrong, and Right. It's not like, come oh, back. Well, that counselor messed me up. No, I can, I can tell you what science says. Uh, to a certain aspect, depending on your beliefs and the relationship that we build between client and counselor, I may be give you I may be able to give you my spiritual input, but at the end of the day, it's all on you. So I'm here to push you to the next level. You, when you come to me, you have to be ready to heal. And depending on what that healing healing journey looks like, I'm there to assist you and aid you along the way. But it starts with you. Wow. You have to have a made up mind, which goes back to kind of what he was saying earlier. 
you have to have a made up mind whether you believe in, in, in Christ, whether it's spiritual, whatever your religion or spirituality is, you have to have a made up mind that I'm at this place. I don't like where I'm at. How can I move to the next level? I want to continue to evolve and grow. Since you have, you only deal with kids right now, right? Mm -hmm, right so now. you really haven't had anybody come to you and ask you, do you believe in God? My Surprisingly, my, my kids do. Oh, they do? Um, surprisingly, I have counseled a, few, a lot of parents. And then I have my friends, so I have adult conversations. So, no, they may not. I don't intentionally put on my counseling hat every time I sit and talk to adults. But it, it is, I'm battling between Brianna and counseling lens or hat. It's going to come in. Yeah. Because that's who well, you are. You came in on me and I shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I, when I shut it down, it was smooth too. God shut it down. That, God shut it Go down. Go ahead and talk God about said, it. Boom, 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 boom. Let me show you what you're dealing with. This is my son who I'm very well pleased in. Amen to You know that. what I'm talking about? And he just pretty much stepped into the room and said, you know what, let me show her something that's extraordinary in you but to all the yeah. people his <laughs> argument was he does not need counseling well i'm not here to say that you do or you don't no, i support I, it either way my stance was as black men as a black woman who desires black love i want a black husband i want to black they black black you know i want to have mm, you know, beautiful chocolate mm -hmm, children one day mm -hmm. um I just want black men to get healed. And so, no, it's not necessarily you sitting in front of a counselor and talking about your issues. Maybe it's community. Maybe it's you getting amongst the brothers who can really teach you some things and help you work through some things that they've been through, like getting amongst wisdom, not a, getting with your homeboys who going to tell you to leave your woman and that's not the best decision for you, but truly getting amongst community that's going to hold you accountable and take you to the next level. Women, we're receptive to doing the healing, whatever that looks like. Black men are more like... Let me, hold let me, everything let me, in. Let me, let me speak for black okay. men because I don't need y'all to speak for mm -hmm. black <laughs> men. That. That's the biggest problem. You Y'all have issues with letting the black man speak for himself. But you're the one who said black just, women live I, longer talk, than black men. Talk? And that's for Again, a reason. I don't want, you know, this is why the podcast is like it is because I can't get a word in edgewise. Now, let me say what I have to say. Um, you know, being a brother, being a, in minister society, they always say being a black man in America, the hunt is on. You okay. say, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're the prey. Okay. You know, so we understand that we, we go through stuff. You know, we understand, and, and, and you, you got to understand, when I said I don't want to come to a counselor, it wasn't because I don't get counseling, because the Word of God that I believe in says that God is my counselor. So I ride with that, you know. Now, is that for everybody? I don't tell everybody to do what I'm doing, but I am saying that there's a place with me and God where I can tell him in and every, everything about me. There's nothing hidden that me and God can't talk about together. So that little statement you made a while ago about if you can't tell God, then I get it. Maybe that's that person. But mm -hmm. for me, I can get buck naked before the Lord. You know what I'm saying? When it comes down to who I am. That's what Adam did. He got naked. You know what I'm saying? He was naked before he was so-called clothed, you know, with the animal's hide that God put on him. So when you're able to get naked before God, you understand who you are. And you know who you got to go to. There's a thing you go by <laughs> called the Holy Spirit where I can talk and walk with God. Enoch walked with God until one day he was taken up. It was an example to show us that there, there can be a relationship that's unbelievable with you and God. But that's, that's your personal relationship <laughs> with God. Not everyone is there. So when you do have new believers coming into Christ or you have people who have done things that, they're, that they are ashamed of um, or you have people who are angry with God because of some type of grief or loss. Um, it's, it's not that easy. Um, to totally surrender to God. That's what you're saying. They hadn't totally surrendered. Because when you totally surrender. No, 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 no. Total surrender. Do you know what totally surrendering is? Yes, totally surrendering. And you can't even put that in the words. It's just, I don't. It's hey, like, I don't you see what I'm saying? <laughs> There's levels. You yeah. understand? That's all yeah, I'm absolutely. saying. There's nothing wrong with you saying what you're saying because there are levels. And if a person hadn't gotten there yet, then I get it. And you talking to them is a form of you get helping them or letting them talk to you is a form of them getting there. All I say is people don't do the research in the Word of God like that. They're not reading and totally surrendering themselves to God in a way that they can understand how to maneuver in life when it comes to God. They sit back and wait on a traditional way to be taught, and then as they taught, 
They have to try to figure it out through because that's their learning process. But, and I'm cool with that. But, but that's but, that breaking generational curses, right? Because correct, your, I'm sure correct. your family members was like, at people, your grandmother. You don't mother, know Anna V. Wallace. Let me just stop I, you right there. You don't know Anna V. Wallace. You don't know Corrine I Smith. Don't. You don't know Anna V. You don't know uh, 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 Lorraine. You don't know these people. But in the words of Tamala, man, I can only imagine. <laughs> right? That they were at church every Sunday, no. 7 30, no. Sunday no. school, 11 a.m., no. 3 p.m., 5 no. p.m. So Not my you, people. But for you to feel like I don't have to practice religious practices, it's more so an intimate relationship with God. That's that's different from what our our people believed. Well, what, what, well, that's your people, but I, and, and my people too. <laughs> my people didn't. They just didn't go. They played like they was doing oh, okay. it a lot of times. That's what they do. They they act like they put their clothes on and they put on just like they would put on the ephod in the Bible. They put their their and they their, they deal with their phylacteries and they get get ready and they go and they. Go to the temple. You see what I'm saying? And once they get to the temple, you know, they might, you know, they might be by the sheep's gate. We don't know. All I'm saying is we try to reenact the tabernacle worship or the synagogue worship. And we try to figure it out. But when Jesus came, he died for you and I so we could have a direct contact and relationship Come to on, God. It's Good Friday. Talk about it. I'm just being real. And people do not accept it in that way. They still try to recreate the temple and they try to re recreate the holiest of holiest. And they put a, a, a pastor in the place of a, of a priest and they try to go through him to get to God. And that's not what the word of God tells mm, us to do. Did that's you hear what I just said? Yeah. They try to make, recreate something that, that Jesus came and debunked because there was only a shadow of things to come. And that's what you're dealing with when you start to deal with people who say we go here and your people did this and you did. They're doing a traditional thing where they're trying to reenact the tabernacle, the synagogue worship. And that's what they do. And they, they act as if they have the Septuagint. And they're going in and understanding, you know, this way to reenact going to worship a place where God used to be in a building place. And, and it used to be the Ark of the Covenant. And it was a place where you would have to go to see him. But now you have Jesus that so-called sits on the right-hand side of the Father. And they don't treat it that way. A lot of times they're trying to figure out how to go through this to get to that. And at the end of the day, all I'm saying is it's okay to have leadership around you. Mm -hmm. But understand that that's all that is because Jesus is still Lord. That's all I'm saying. You got to know him for yourself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, That's all I'm saying. So I got a question. So um, with counselors, anything someone come to you and speak to you is supposed to be spoken in confidence. You're not supposed to say to anybody else. Have you ever heard of any cases where um, counselors go back and, this, you know, oh, shooting the breeze with their friends or, and it gets out that they spill the beans about a client? <laughs> Um, counseling, ed education. Woo, honey, y'all pray for educators. <laughs> my God, it's a different world. I think just talking in conversation, everyone discloses something. However, as long as you're not giving intimate names details and, and names mm -hmm. and specifics, it's okay. For me, I am still technically under supervision in two parts. And so, yes, there have been times where I have, again, kind of, disclose some information but not specifics under supervision and legally that is okay because you're seeking assistance or help or whatever mm -hmm. when it comes to helping a potential how client. to deal with that certain yeah, situation yeah absolutely okay but i just was wondering like you know law and it doesn't have to be anybody you even know just like case because whenever you are learning they might bring up oh a case this is what happened and then the client sued the your counselor because it got back to them that they told X, Y, Z about such and such and such no, and whatever. We, when we take that um, oath or we, we follow our code of ethics, everything is confidential, like I say, unless it discloses some type of harm, harm. or you get permission. And even in that, there are specifics that you are, specific people that you are able to alert or tell. Mm -hmm. Other than that, like I tell my kids, and I'm, I'm the best secret keeper in the world. You come and talk, <laughs> you got to talk to me about the teacher, your mama, your daddy, the principal, anybody that's going to stay in these four mm -hmm. walls. I do believe that everybody somewhat needs um, a counselor, um, whether they seek it or not. For the main reason that um, they 
we're human beings. So sometimes we think one track minded. We don't always think of all the aspects of a situation. Mm -hmm. So just sitting before somebody and just, you know, spilling your guts about this situation that just happened, blah, 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 blah. They might say, they might, you know, and you're not actually give, telling them what to do. You're just opening their mind to other avenues of thinking. You know what I mean? So it made, oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, okay, you talking oh. about a good uh, somebody that's a good listener. You can call them a counselor, whatever you right. want to. Communicating with others is, is a big deal. And and being able to talk to people. We try to put titles in position does not guarantee productivity. Some of these people are not even uh, uh, in a space where they may even be good counselors. You have bad counselors. I, you have I, bad yes, preachers. You, you have bad, a, a lot of things be, be, because of a title, we, we can misconceive some things when it comes down to people. I'm being honest. And that is something we got to be careful <laughs> about. You understand? Me? We got to be careful because we can we can lead people in the wrong direction but as well. we're not leading anybody you understand in the what wrong I'm direction. Saying? Everybody ain't Hold good on. counselors. But um, the no. title, but only thing the title does for me, the title positions you for me to know where to go find you. You understand what I mean? So because you are um, trained and you went to class and you know certain things i know and you this is your title i'm like oh let me look look up this counselor cuz if the person doesn't have any title i wouldn't know who to find where to find where to look so the title is not that i'm putting this person up on this pedestal to say that they're like god or like whoever mm -hmm. but i just know where i can go and find this person it's easier for me to find I well, mean, one of my my pastor is um, or or was prior to COVID and my mother passing was um, Pastor Oscar Epps, and even he would tell you, "Honey, go get some counseling," because he he can't do it all. Like even a pastor would tell you to go. Well, get, wait a minute. First of all, the emphasis on that pastor thing ain't cute to me. I'm not worried about no dang <laughs> emphasis on no pastor, no man. The, at the end of the day, man? that's what again another title where we have to be able to condition ourselves to understand that we're going to have to do some self-healing. We're yeah. going to have to do some research. We're going to have to be responsible as it, as people. And you say, well, but what they need somebody because they're going through it. I agree. Yeah, well, I'm going to be honest with you. You got to put your big boy drawers on sometime. You might need a whooping. I agree with the Don't spare the rod. You, the, the rod. You'll spoil the child. I, I'm sick of people being cream puffs out here trying to figure out ways to cop out the something so they can be depressed in their own little corner box. Get up! And look up. And I agree. My healing journey started way before I, I on, out to seek counseling in a professional realm. But what I'm saying is, respectfully, our black women, we go to our beautician, our hairdresser, that's our go-to girl, we tell her everything. However, when you when you look at the lens of a counselor, you're right. We have been trained. We have the expertise to take you to the next level. Anybody can listen all day. Anybody, anybody can give you advice. Your barber could be like, your wife tripping you may not want to talk to her for a couple of days but is that sound advice do you really think that I'm going to sit up and listen to my barber or my my barber my counselor my pastor my I'm going to listen to God and that's the way it's going to be I'm not going to set up here and act like the word is not true for me and others who believe the way they should when it comes down to self awareness and reading and researching but I get what you're people saying. are not trying to do nothing on their own they think somebody's going to do it for them get up the difference is where friends and barbers and everybody, they're telling you what to do. They're giving their own input on, oh, leave your wife or... Leave your wife? Why that no, got to be a thing? No, I'm just saying, giving an leave example. Leave your wife. No, we, or, we no that's, that's, not, that's not your barber. That's your homegirl. <laughs> that's not your barber. Why your barber gotta be a girl? No, that's your homegirl doing that. Girl leave your, you leave that. your husband. Yeah, I mean, don't put that men, on us. Men say that stuff yeah, too. Women mostly say it. I didn't heard it more from women. Whatever, men so all I'm saying too. is don't set up here and put that on the barber. Y'all didn't put it. Oh no. That God. beautician, <laughs> that beautician, that beauty supply place y'all go to, that place of wherever y'all going to get your little wine and drink, y'all better be careful on what you're talking about in there. Don't put that on us. But with a counselor, hey man, counselors do not yeah. give their own, should not. No, we don't give our give personal input. Give your own personal input. They just make you 
we deep go back down. That's the counselors that you guys are describing. There are some counselors out there that's telling you everything. You've never Who, been to right, a counselor. Exactly. I'm just, like, you know, all you I'm saying is, y'all, uh, I don't want to sit up here and try to glorify this movement well, where people they're are. They're not trained to do are that. People fancying up counselor, right? Right now, this is a place where it, it, people going to talk about me about but this. Please. Uh-uh, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. It's a counselor's world <laughs> right now. Every, it's cute. It's very cute to say, I'm going to see counseling. You should see That's counseling. Powerful. That No, stop. That is something that is a trend right now. That is it's a trend needed. that was not a trend before. And if I say right now, you know what, guys? You should very much seek counseling because that'll you be should. the right thing for you to do. No, I'm going to say you need to you need to get yourself up and pull your big boy draws up. But and some, people say, don't have the, some people don't have, have the to tools do it. to do so. You're going to have to do it. You, if you I'm your parent. I'm going to tell you to get Parenting up. Parenting is so different. My I'm going to tell you to get up. Because that's what they do. They call their mama before they call their counselor. If their mama's still living. If their daddy's still living. If they pastor around. And then he tells them, well, you probably need to see counselor. Boy, if you don't get out of here. My, my grandpa and them didn't do counseling. They would whoop you. But who's to say that that was right? Who's because to say it was wrong? I'm all right. But who's what that? I'm saying is... Who's the, to say the, it was wrong? Like the, who's the to say it was wrong? The corporal punishment stemmed from who's slavery. Who's to say it was wrong? No, no, no. No, no. no. no the <laughs> word of God didn't stem from no slavery. I'm going to get put off the podcast. Yeah, you're about to get put off here. Because <laughs> if the scripture says, spare not the rod that is <laughs> fall the trial, if you tell me that came from But what does that look slaves? like? What does that sound like? What does that feel? No, 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 no. Somebody going to need some ass whoopings around here. I'm not saying that they don't. You ain't gonna just let this this little kid got a little thing on. Now, Tommy. Now, now Tommy. I'm not now, saying Phil, that. I want you to sit down. Sit down over there. Oh. Oh, you! I, I told you to sit down. Some people the, take I'm it to the extreme. Deal with this. When I'm saying some right? people take it to the extreme. They do this and then they do like When that saying. boy grow up. And he's acting a fool. They say he needed a counselor. Let me put my counselor hat on because he needed a counselor, right? Showing me he needed a counselor. When that boy grows up, he got that little thing tied on him. They tying things on kids now. They'll tie a whole little rope on the boy. I seen him at the airport. We it was a little boy. He ride. He had a little rope. Come here, Tommy. They bring and they bring him in. Well, you tying ropes on that child. You know what I'm saying? Now he gets older. You think you didn't discipline that child? He fell out in the stove 15 times. You ain't did nothing. Now all of a sudden he get old and he go to acting out in a growner way that he been doing in a small, t- in a toddler way. This tantrum turns into a crime later on. A crime. Now he's 16 in the TYC. You know what I'm saying? He, he he's, he's up, he's got older, and you say, oh man, I, didn't, I wasn't a good parent. No, you you did what they taught you to do because in this world today, you go to jail for that. The kids even tell you, mm-hmm. oh, you, I'm going to call that line, that hotline on you. Uh, mine can call it, boy, I tore their butt up. I don't care if she's second in command up there at that school. She might be, sal- what they call it, saluted. Salutatory. I don't give a damn about none of that. I tore that butt up. I went up there to that school and got her. I say, wait a minute. She was in the first, you remember that time when she wouldn't use the restroom? And they, the count, I went up there, she was talking to my daughter. She say, Oh my goodness, she won't. She's her stomach is hurting. I said, What? Oh, you have to come in here and come talk. To, uh, okay, I said, Get in the truck. I, I took her to the house. I said, You go and you better use that restroom, and I ain't playing with you. Next thing you know, she used the restroom. I took her back up there. Oh, she's back. You know, what I'm because they were sitting up there trying to baby this situation. And I'm being, I'm being real. I know my child, so I knew what she needed. And I, when I took her back, she didn't have that problem no more. And yeah, I didn't whoop her either. Her I didn't whoop her. I didn't. I just told her what she needed to do. But that woman up there doing that little, oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't oh, do that because sh- I have a counselor. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Is, don't do that. Oh my goodness. Come. Oh man. So you you made a boo boo. You know. <laughs> come on, man. This is this is our children. You. What do you think you're doing to that child when you do that? But what do you think you're doing to the child when you beat them with a you're tree You're going branch? over the top. Nobody ain't told you to beat them with no tree branch. I just told y'all I didn't but whoop them. But that's what, that's our, that's our history. Or scream and verbally no, abuse them. No, I have, a, I, have a deeper, I have a deeper voice. I don't, I'm cool with the, the licks that I took. I took my lick. You know what I'm saying? I took my leg. Yeah, and we all did. But you did? I, said, yeah, I don't know so, if you even no, got it. Don't do no, it. You, no, you couldn't have. Cheryl was crazy. If you knew where I was coming and from. And Shasha was too. All I'm um, saying is, our people, you can you can be light with, with this procedure that you guys keep explaining to a point to where you're not helping somebody. You're hurting them. But what, you know what? I okay. think with everything that um, well, everybody's talking about, 
What I'm thinking is that yes. it's balance. It's a little bit of what you're saying. It's a little bit of what he's saying. I it's agree all with that. balance. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And that's what everybody has a problem with because it's it's easier to go one extreme or the other extreme. That's real. But it's hard to find a, a balance with anything that we do in life. I, I agree mm-hmm. with that. Go ahead, because you you've been no, on the top. I, I tell. <laughs> Oh, well, you the yeah. counselor, you know you what I'm saying? Know. Don't um, give it to us, counselor. No, I, to- I totally agree. I don't think that there's a... I don't have children, so I can't... Oh, I, I could have figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that there's a right way and a wrong way. What I'm saying is who's to say that our parents' ways were right or our ancestors' or ways wrong. were right or wrong, right? Well, I'm so you, you have to do what's best mm-mm, mm-mm, for mm-mm, the child, mm-mm, but excessive mm-mm. beating or excessive... Mm-mm. Nobody Little Johnny, said, ain't nobody said no excessive beating. Shady I get boo you know, oh. like you you got to find the balance. People always say, and I my heart goes out to parents because sometimes I look at the kids and I'm like, well, I, I don't know, you know, I, I understand your parents, I don't I don't know either, but I'm gonna figure it out. There's no rule book or. There's handbook no to parenting and even if there that's was not true. Say, that is no, Bible, that's not true say, there you go so that was the biggest story I ever heard on the show right then there's no book there is a book people say that all the time there's a book there's a few books there's out there there's a book for everything but you know, even then, then there are all children are, everybody is different yeah. and yeah. how I you mean, approach so, things so are different so Jesus whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. Nah. why you come up so Jesus shouldn't have got beat when he when he when he snuck away to the temple and Mary was looking for him and he told her woman I'm doing but I'm saying, should he not have gotten beaten for no, sneaking out? No, he didn't sneak Why? out. Because he was a son of That's, God? First of all, th- you got the story wrong. He didn't sneak what was off. the story? They left him on accident. They left him? Yeah, they, he didn't sneak off. Okay. He was talking and they didn't realize they had left yeah. without him. Jesus so don't sit up else. here and try to act like Jesus did he whatever. Was something else. You know? But they could have turned around and said, like, you know, you're supposed to be right here at my foot, at, holding on to my skirt while I'm walking. Ain't to make sure. He got that, that, with now, his this, mama. This is Now, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm but, talking about. But hold right on, here. let me Y'all say just this. Hold on, stuff. but what I'm saying, yeah, it, but what I'm saying, no, but it, to me, it's almost the same thing. Like, okay, example, Shamari, when she was younger, I remember going to the balloon festival up there in McKinney, and on the way back, we stopped at the gas station. She was ain't nothing but probably about three, four years old, whatever. And I had my other baby in the, in the basket. So we stopped at the gas station, goes changing his diaper, whatever. She was right beside me, and I felt her. All of a sudden, I looked. She had wandered off. She was over there talking to some other people. And I'm like, if you don't get you. So in that case, it's almost the same thing. Like, you know, when he no, wandered no, off. But hold no. on, hold you on, You weren't paying attention to my daughter. Hold I didn't on. know nothing about that. Yes, it would have been did. some problem. I, I can that. tell you that right now. I've, I've, if I've I've I knew you, you, left, you didn't watch out for and you but probably be keeping your eyes on it, it'd be some problem. I've always told this story. Like so anyway, you know what I'm no. the difference is when no. she went back and was like, when Mary went back and was speaking to him, he answered her correctly. Like, I'm about my father's business. That's why he didn't that's get That's a no- smart remark. I understand it's true, Jesus, but that's a smart remark. You tell, you go missing from your mama and tell her you're doing your father's business and tell me she'll knock you upside your head. Well, it was a smart remark. No, so what uh, I'm saying well, well, is... Let me, let me just cut you out okay. and debunk that right now. First of all, Jesus, you have a, I see you have an attitude about Jesus <laughs> and him not I love being. Him. Well, if you loved him so much, you would be understanding. That's the problem. You're because not understanding he, with Jesus. We are made in his image, you, and he gets us you, more than you, anybody. You understand these kids, but you don't understand Jesus when he was a kid. <laughs> What kind of counselor is that? <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus was a child when that happened, but you Jesus don't understand was real. that. Even, okay, so even when when he was facing death and he was like, Jesus, I mean, God, you sure it's not another way we can get out of this? Like, you, me, Jesus, like me, God. Oh, you, you're son? paraphrasing. That, that's the uh, living Bible. I am that's paraphrasing. The, that's the NIV version <laughs> um, or something. It, it made us, you know, like none of us want to go through some type of suffering. We all be like, God, why me? Are you sure? You, you Like, really me? It just, it really made him human. And that's what I, I love and, re- and respect about him. Like I said, he had a smart mouth. He read the disciples plenty of times. Ain't nobody talking about that. Well, you got to understand, no matter how he tried to read the disciples or get them where they were going, they had issues. And at the end of the day, you know, all I could say is, you know, um, you have a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff to say about Jesus, but you listen to your people you counsel. You know what I mean? All I'm saying is you guys have a tough job, mm-hmm. and I know it's needed. Conversation, communication with other individuals is what I'll call it. It's needed. Mm-hmm. Being able to communicate in a way to where people can be uh, put in a better position 
uh, as I talked about, what was that boy named the guy that that offed himself? The, that was on the Ellen show, Hitch or Nitch, what's his name? Chip or Twitch. Chip Twitch. Mm-hmm. Him, you know, basically, if he had somebody that he could have conversated with before he went and, you know, done what he done, somebody he could have picked up the phone and called, you know, counsel, friend, uh, otherwise. Somebody that could have helped him, could have helped him, yes. But at the end of the day, all I'm saying is when you see these situations coming your way, I know that there's somebody needed to conversate with. Mm-hmm. I just say that we put a lot of titles on a lot of things and we create these waves to where we try to act as if we're pretty and fancy them up. I'm just telling you that it's a conversation. It's a way, an eloquent way of having conversation where you have favor to be able to intellectually guide somebody out of a situation where they may have been going the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I like that word favor because you do have, I f- just like you have to be called to teach these That's children. It. That's they are it. That's it. I agree with that. Different breed and, yeah. you know, you have to be ordained by God. You have to be called and ordained in the ministry of helping, the helping industry, which counseling falls under. And so, yeah, it does take a special, unique individual. What about to, uh, what about the what did you think about it when you seen that it happened with uh, Twitch? So at that time, I was not on social media, and I'm still not on social really? media heavy because you don't know what happened. No, I knew it happened, but I didn't follow the story in details because okay. I try to protect protect my peace and things of that nature. Because I, I take so much in on a daily basis that the extra, I try not to. Um, overload myself in information but what i will say in reference to self-harm suicide a lot of people really don't want to kill themselves they just want the pain to be over but what i would encourage people is that if you just keep on a little while longer you'll build up some type of resilience and you'll realize that if i made it through this i can make it through whatever comes my way and so um i just encourage people to just keep going keep fighting yeah the thing is that people know that but at the same time because i've met some people who have tried to commit suicide before. That's one thing I loved about always having this store. We've had this store for a very long time, is that I've met people who maybe didn't even come. I believe that God sent them in here, honestly, because they didn't even come to buy anything. And when they come in, they tell me their whole full life story, just unload everything. And I remember meeting this lady that, you know, we were talking about depression and everything like that. And a lot of times I, I my feeling about that is, Especially when you have children or you have a husband or you have, you know, people who love you. I'm like, how can you think about killing yourself when you have this person to live for, that person to live for? I understand you might not have the money or you, this went wrong, that went wrong, whatever. And be like, they'll be better off without me, especially because a lot of people feel like, oh, he will take care of them better than I would. Or my mom will take care of them better than I would or whatever. But nobody can ever replace a mom or a father. You know what I mean? So I don't understand how, but then... And I was telling her this, I I don't understand how anybody can do this. And she was like, in that moment, when you're thinking about committing suicide or doing anything, you're not thinking about kids, family, anybody at all. You don't see that. You don't think about that. And she said she didn't think about her kids. And luckily, when she did go to commit suicide, it just didn't happen. So she's still here to tell that story. You know, I I, I definitely... um you know, I sit back and like I said, I, I really think that, that the conversations are needed. I think you guys, you want to fancy them up, then that's what you do. If you want to fancy up your little title because you went to school and got your little education, that's fine, you know. Um, but, you know, grandmama had, was a counselor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that woman, when you was, when you when when that person came in here and you talked to him, mm-hmm. you was a counselor. Anytime that people, you've heard people say. I agree. Let me tell you, it was people say, man, you know what, man, I was doing bad that day, man. I was, I was feeling down and you, you, you said this and it helped me. I would have to argue with you. So there. you're saying people don't say I that. Can feel the you said people don't say like, that. Girl, you better speak up. For <laughs> All us. I'm saying is, no, you telling you, me that people don't no, help people. You were a blessing, and you were a witness, or you were testifying, or you, she was giving you a testimony, and you were letting God use you. When it comes to counseling, it's just different. Not everybody can do what you do, boss, and sit in that boss seat. Talk and boss talk ECEO. Boss talk. Say it ECEO. right. Put, I, Put some respect me. on my name. Not Shout out to Birdman. Can. Okay. Go ahead. Not everyone can do what you do. And I, I wouldn't say everybody can hold a conversation and put a mic in front of it. I, I wouldn't say that because there's levels to what you do. You have a gift. You've been called. You've been equipped. You've been trained to do what you do. And God has blessed you beyond measure. That's the same thing when it comes to, to counseling. We are unique, skilled individuals. Oh, you hear that, 
ass deal. Say that one more time. We I are a unique, skilled individual. Well, let me yeah. turn. And it, it takes and I, I of, agree with that. And what people don't know is that with counseling, we, we are our first client. So I literally, my mom died in July. I started grad school in August. And to take myself Sorry, I didn't, re- I didn't realize what that was. To take myself, myself through the healing journey so fresh in my grief process, it's like, wow. Like, okay, I can empathize with people who've lost someone or something or or I can deal with someone who who's struggling with a work-life balance because honestly, prior to starting my counseling degree, I was a queen of self-care. My friends could tell you that I, every single day catering to me now I, I neglect it in a time where I'm taking so much and I really need to release and take care of myself I'm not able to because I go from work to school but do you have a counselor you yourself know. that um you of release? course you do yes periodically to? I, I periodically you have to I release in. absolutely a good a wise woman told me Carrie um Carrie I want to say Anderson but maybe I'm mixing up my counselor. She was the middle school counselor when I started at Barry Middle School in Mesquite. She t- she actually is a sore, so forgive me, Syra. Um, but she told me a go. good therapist. Wait a minute. I got to <laughs> stop you on that. I'm so sick of this, man. You know, when you start Syra and all that, that's cool. But understand, you 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 know what? It, okay, what was that about? She told me that what? a good no, no. therapist <laughs> will uh-huh. keep a therapist, and that's that's and that's what I've always heard. What's that was like the most realest thing I've ever heard. So absolutely, I have an amazing counseling counselor who I see and I check in with periodically when things are like when I know that I'm not okay and I know mm-hmm. I need to talk with someone. I need someone to rationalize my thoughts or help me figure things out because you, it's amazing how you can keep how you can help everybody except for yourself. Yeah. But that's what people do. Females, a lot of females do mm-hmm. that anyway. But um, I have a question, um, and I know you're young in this counseling business. So I'm not sure if you know this, but I want you to see if, imagine if this could be possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Being a female counselor, and especially if you counsel males going through different things in their life, whatever, and maybe they're single or going through certain traumas or whatever, couldn't it be possible for you to like, because they're letting down their guards, they're being very emotional. Couldn't some female counselors actually even fall for their client? Oh, well, it's possible. I've heard stories that has not ever been my case with male, female, same sex. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you fall, oh, my God, oh, you know, because we want to help and save everybody. Oh, yeah. his story, his background, ooh. Um, it, it, it's, it's possible. However, there's, like, some ethical and legal things that right, go into that's what play. I would think. And it's like a timeline that you have to follow, you know, and, and things of that nature. For me, when you see counseling, you know, Everything is exposed. So would I ever see myself dating a client? No. Mm, well, you're going to lose. You might miss your husband. No. All I'm saying is... <laughs> no, no, no. no. All I'm saying is... Listen, man. You guys... Y'all, y'all something else. You know, we are a unique I really, I individual. really think that, like, even you, you know, like, for you to say... Oh, yeah. Um, you know, very much, you know, counseling is going to be the way and... That's what everybody's saying. It's cool. Our people, some people are going to get help through those avenues. But Can Uncle, listen, Uncle Jody, uh, <laughs> Aunt Bobby, uh, 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 Aunt Willie B, uh, 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 Cutting Sydney, uh, these people are needed. Uh, uh, family is needed. You hear me? Foundational mm-hmm. family, mom and daddy uh, in the house together. Uh, the divorce rate is at an all time high. And we sitting up here acting as if a lot of these things, uh, it's going to keep you paid. You don't have to worry about it because the way Can't things are, boom. hold on, it's going to keep you paid. And I'm not saying it's not needed, but we need to start rebuilding our people and the foundations the way it needs to be. We need to chant for family. We need to try to come up with ways to stick things out there for our people in a way to where they can get back to the foundation of building family. And I think that's one of our biggest problems. Agreed. However, in the black community, well, however, what I'm realizing in the however, year 2023 you it when you said however. is counseling is still taboo, even in the Latinx community. I would say, especially it's not in that the Latinx taboo. Latinx. Everybody's yes. talking about counseling, man. But, but Everybody. respectfully, even look at your viewpoint, right? That's where you're me. like, oh, it may uh-uh, be. Uh-uh. But it's a lot of individuals out there. What I'm saying is well, the, the other race 
has held the, the other key race. to healing, Excuse to me? processing their emotions, to speaking with someone and seeing the benefit of it. The other race, who yeah, is the other race? The white race, the white people, the Caucasians, whatever you whatever you want to refer to them as. Black people are just now getting on this wave. I am the first in my family. My mama thought counseling was taboo. My grandparents, what what the hell was counseling? What what is that? I'm the first in my family to seek professional and, and I help, hate that. and it is freeing and it is liberating. And yes, it God is free. Can, God, absolutely. No, oh, absolutely. No freeing. Free she said free. Oh. oh, no. I was about to say it is yeah, free? free. Yes, depending it's on a bag. If it's you, a bag. depending on it's your, a, your bag. employer. I would encourage people to, to check with their employer or, or their insurance to see if they offer EAP services, employee assistance program, where you can get up to so many um, services for free. You it's have, definitely you just have not to free. Find a, it is. You just have some to people find can't a, afford it. Right. And it's expensive, right? Which is why, again, it's never been a popular topic in the African-American community because it, it was a luxury, right? It was a luxury to be able to go to counseling and to, to seek professional advice or help. So now that black people, again, are are tapping into the counseling industry and it is booming because COVID did expose the fact that mental health is very real and it's on the the rise mm -hmm. and and we need help. Your pastor can't do it alone, which is why he's telling y'all to go go see somebody. Okay? Well, that's what the pastor is uh, saying. Uh, yeah, so you think that's called the pastor? Say so what pastor? I'm not saying Which that pastor? <laughs> who are you talking about? All of them. All I'm telling you. They would you, agree. They said, honey. Who is they? They said, go, go talk to somebody. You know, all, Help them. I'm, I'm gonna Help be, you. I'm going to be real with you. Um, I enjoy this. The Thank back you. and forth. Yeah. Uh, the different ways people think. Mm -hmm. The trueness. Because I'm going to give you truth. I know that a lot of times counseling is, is, is a thing where it's pretty much saying, you know what, Mama and them was wrong for what they did. I get it. But God says the same thing. God says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It gives you a second chance to go at it. Is that not real? It is real, depending on how far you are in your faith journey. Ooh, Everybody is not there. And, and I, like I say, I have been... 100% sold out for Jesus and like I said when I lost my mama it, hit to, it took a hit to my faith and I'm not saying that I'm I'm not there again I am but I could wake up some days and I side eye Jesus like really me without my mama so it just everybody's walk is different if, so that's your if, experience that's your personal so relationship so I'm the only with one God. can really figure I'm it out I'm not saying huh? that I'm just saying everybody's we walk is different we have to stop thinking everybody's different you write about that but we have to make sure to put it out there in a way to where people can have all type of resources to rely on. We can't just say this is one way and this is the only way. There is all type of resources. But for so long, but the black community I just, has, Are you going to just let no, me? But, are you but if I may, like no, that? but if I may, if for you so know, long, you may not. <laughs> the black community only resource has been religion. No. And it's not working. No, they, they religion I, won't I work. See, religion, see won't, religion won't work because you're right. Mm -hmm. Traditional religion does not work. But people are, need to get rid of that. They have to change the way they're being taught, the way they're the way they're thinking. Americanized Christianity is not good. People are over here acting like money is their god. We act like this is not happening, and we call it religion and say this is what basically uh, our people have been struggling. No, your pastor's been fleecing you. Sometimes people have, have yo, I had a boy sit right there that his pastor, the pastor that his mama was going to was his dad and he couldn't say nothing about it and he was sliding envelopes under the door. I mean, you call that your pastor, that traditional religion? Listen, let's be real. What are you, what are you doing? That's not even what the word reads. You're out here pushing some agenda that don't even nowhere near look at what the word of God is saying. So I don't get on with that. So you're going to tell me that tradition and that religion is something that, that, that is real and our people was, no, we need to get to the true essence of understanding who God is. For man. yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can't, I don't go by all that. So I can't just get in that box of our people been misled, such, 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 uh, because they were trying to go by religion. They wasn't reading. Some of them was uneducated. They weren't even educated enough to understand what they was even reading. They couldn't tell you where this came from, where the Dead Sea Scroll was, what the canocity of the scripture is. They don't know that stuff. But we want to say they live for God. They don't even know how to live for God. They don't even know who he is. 
All I'm saying is everybody's <laughs> walk is different. You, you're you there. Some people are just coming to Christ. Some people are trying to forgive Christ. Some people are trying to move past church hurt. Some people are trying to move past life transgressions. Everybody's walk is different. For those who go out and seek counseling for themselves, good for you. For those of you who build a personal relationship with God, good for you. For those of you who believe in a higher power or meditation or yoga, whatever the case may be, good for you. Everybody is different. As long as you are working towards being a better person, I, I love it. You. That's exactly right. That's where I'm at with it, right? Yeah. You just said it. Because it's so many different type of people that's going to need healing and relief some kind of way. How do we get them there? Counseling is definitely a great way, probably one of the most thought out ways of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Counselors are winning and they should. They're educated. They they have went to They're school. trained. Yeah, they're trained, Licensed. said again. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, unique, skilled individuals. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the unique, skilled individuals are the ones that I do commend. Uh, and I, and they got a tough job. Um, our religious leaders, our spiritual leaders, they got a tough job. Mm -hmm. um, our uh, Uncle Bob or Benny that's sitting under the tree, he got a tough job too because some people might not make it to any of these people that you're you're talk, we're referring to, but God steps right in and start to make things happen for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he has a way to where when we talk about the old way things used to be, I I understand that things are predestined and that we go through things for a reason. The handwriting's on the wall, you understand. So I know that everything's going to work out because. Thy will got to be done. Mm -hmm. So all of the stuff that happened, it happened. But at the end of the day, God made a way. Rahab the harlot. She was able to help a whore. She was able to help uh, people to get to where they was trying to go. There's always somebody. Oh, there's a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And God causes who he chooses. Like, right. I, I believe you're probably different from any member in your family, right? God calls you to oh, experience some. No, nah, don't do that. Some go. type of generational Did wealth. You, hear that? you know, a level of success. Like, you're you're different. Your mindset is different. God chose you. You don't think people in your family before you wanted things that you wanted or wanted to think the way that you thought. But God didn't call them. He called you just like he called me. And I'm different from people in my family. So, again, that comes with a generation that comes with times changing, you know, that comes with people just evolving and knowing God on an intimate level or for even those who don't believe in God again, a higher being or if they're atheists or whatever. I believe regardless of what you are, God still loves you. God loves you. And what you are is not what you're going to be. Period. Everybody put people in boxes. You understand what I'm saying? But what you are. It's not what you're going to be. I never seen nobody that was not constantly evolving mm -hmm. some kind of way every day. But we choose to put a person in a certain circumstance. We'll hate somebody for a position that they was in 10 years ago and they ain't even there no more. Because of what they did to me, I, ain't, I don't mess with that. Bye, bye, bye. And that person ain't even there no more. Or that person's dead. Mm -hmm. well, I found a guy dead the other day that I was accusing of some things. And I was like, right. And, and my wife come back and say, you know, he dead. I said, what? Man, I, I was still at his throat about something he said in this store that one day. Remember? I was like, oh, I, say, I know I, me and him did this or that. That, that man gone on the glory. Wherever he may be. But that's what I'm saying. We, can, we meet people in a place and we keep them there mentally. You know what I'm saying? Conditionally, like we, you know, what I'm telling you, we, we, we keep them there, and that person might not even be there anymore. So there's, it's a lot of avenues and angles when it come down to life, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I applaud you. I don't want to talk to nobody every day about an issue. But every people don't go day. to counseling every single day. Oh well, yeah, they do. The counselor got to deal with that's her job five days out of the week. <laughs> different no. people. Different people. people. That's what I'm saying. The counselor, <laughs> yes. Just yeah. But do you have every some day. people who go every single right. day? No. People no, don't go I'm every day. I'm not talking day. about everybody going every day. You know what I was saying. You said exactly no. what I was saying. You got the little woman power going. But you know what I was saying. <laughs> I was just saying that you, as a counselor, so as a counselor are dealing with people, with people every, every day. day. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, I'm going to be honest with you. Let me say this. Police officers, my partners, some of them police officers. One of them, 
I remember he had seen three people got killed. He went to all three other homicides or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He then next thing you know he's at a robbery. Next thing you know he's here. He's there. And a week or two go by. One of my friends, I said, man, you need to get a you need a break. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you seeing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, man, it's cool, man. I got to make this for my old, you know, I got money, I got stuff I got to do. But what I'm telling you is everybody, not just that person, that everybody, they need, I think they need to shift them in and out. I think they need to have three months off or three months on, all of them, because they're constantly looking at that stuff every day. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm, do you ever think about that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's been some breaks that I went home sick thinking I was gonna enjoy the break and I'm my body is broke down, my mind is broke down. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's a lot when you're in the helping industry, like you say, police officers, people in the medical field, um, God bless them. It's it's a lot. Man, I think you I think you dope. Let me be honest with you, I gave you a tough time on Boss Dog One Hundred and One, like I do everybody. That's what they want. They wants to hear the rah rah. They wants to understand how you. How could he say that? How do he think that? How she say that? What? It, that's what it is. But and through all of it, I just feel like there's something there that everybody can get. Somebody might walk away with something and say, you know what, man, I needed to hear that. I ain't giving up. I remember one guy told me, he said, man, you know, I didn't like old boy, but man, when you broke it down the way you did, I thought he was okay. I said, okay, because that's what this is. Mm -hmm. It's just a conversation. You have counselors. Some counsel, some people feel the way Under you the do. Under the tree conversations. Yeah, that's what I call it, yeah. Like you're just sitting around talking at, on the porch. And that's good. That's community to me. <laughs> some it. people need that. Yeah. AKA black men. Hey, <laughs> see what I mean? I can't stand women. Women I are the worst when it comes to competing. They, they, healing. they love to compete with black Black women need, need healing. That. Yes, we do. God Bad. knows we do. But Matter of fact, the white men have propped them up. God, forgive me. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> No, I was just messing with y'all. Don't feel that way. Y'all don't get mad at me. I know you're going to get a little upset. I might cut that part out. I don't know. I might leave it in. It's really amusing. Yeah. <laughs> but I thank you for coming on the show. Thank y'all so much for having Man, me. I'm so, so it's your grateful. first time ever being being on, on, a, on podcast. a podcast. This is the dopest one. I'm so grateful. This boy done brought you over here and stuck you in that chair. He know you're going to get look, lit Look, I'm up. supporting his dream and, and look at God. But no, I'm, Somebody I'm, can get help. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for having me. Man. First of many, y'all. You coming I, back? Every, you we're going to bring him back and let her counsel every, every so often so if I can talk crazy to him. Put him, put her, put her on here with Money Moses. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm a gonna tough need to Let's do a, We're gonna do our on live um, counseling session <laughs> with you and Money really? Moses. Okay. Y'all want to do that? That'll, that'll, be, that'll, be, that'll be, dope. be dope. That'll be dope. Oh, you? <laughs> <laughs> Why you like scared? No. She's like, you gonna no, make her get scared? So, man, listen, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. You know, um, we love you. Thank you. I love you guys, too. God bless y'all. Many blessings forever, Thank forever you. to come. It's been another great segment. Of Boss Talk 101. Where the bosses talk. And we out. <laughs>